Okay, so welcome to the CCI meeting of June 29th at 6.30. I'm going to do a, uh, I guess I'm going to read this. Certain meetings normally held to municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the House Bill number 58 of the 193 General Court, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL 30, chapter 20 until March 31st, 2025. Lily does it so much better, but anyway. Okay, I'm going to take roll call and then we can get right to it. Well, first of all, meeting guidelines speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non repetitive, please. So I'll do roll call. Uh, Carolyn? Yes, here. Is here. Anna Lee, you're here. Trevor? Here. Here. And I guess the select board has to open their meeting. Yes, I will open our meeting at uh, 6, 640, 640. That's good. Okay, okay, great. Thanks. I see Andrew's here. I also see that Julie here. is here. Okay. I know that Kate Wallace can't make it, Andrew, and Annie Curtis can't make it. And as you can see, Lily is not going to be here. All right, great. So, um, we have Luke and Jenny again from VHB. Welcome and thank you for being here. And sorry for the little kerfuffle in the beginning. It's always fun. But so, Luke, I'm going to uh, hand it over to you and you can decide whether you want questions at the end or throughout. Yeah, we <clears throat> so we have some slides that we can uh, walk through. Uh, and yeah, Jenny, why don't you just share your screen? Uh, I'll present a few, Jenny will present a few uh, with a little bit of summary mm -hmm. of what we've, where we've been, what we've learned. Okay. Um, we don't want to be repetitive with some stuff you've seen, so we'll jog through anything um, that we've showed you already. But, you know, quick summary of what we learned from uh, the public engagement, the stakeholder sessions, et cetera, just to set the table for when we uh, wrap up the slides, what, what Typically what we do with clients lately, when we're 3D modeling something and doing a site plan, we used to make a nice rendering, present it in a meeting, get their feedback, then go back to the 3D model, make adjustments. Uh, these days we just open up the 3D, 3D model <laughs> and zoom around, pan around and show you what we're thinking and just have a dialogue with you, get your constructive input uh, because the point is, let's not move to final rendering phase because we're just not there yet. You know, we, we have more um, discussions, stuff like that to get through before we're doing anything final. But we always think it's good to sort of touch base uh, with the committee, show you the 3D model, get any feedback that you have. Uh, and spoiler alert, we, we have, I think, two or three options that we've started to model out. Um, so we can discuss the relative merits of each of those. So yeah, uh, I, so quick note: I can't I can't share my screen. It says that um, the host disabled screen sharing. So I don't know, Denise. There's a way that you can enable that. You can share. I'm just saying all participants. Okay, you should be able to now. I hope. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, I can sort of represent these first few. Yep. So Deerfield Municipal Campus is of course our project. Uh, next slide. Here's a quick table of uh, sort of contents that we can walk through. So we'll take a look at the schedule, see where we're at. Uh, summarize our progress to date. Uh, we've crafted a draft vision statement and goals, which is an important part of the process, right? Because this is the litmus test with which, with which we're going to judge our scenarios at the end. Is it fulfilling the goals? So we'll read through what we have for you guys. Uh, what we need from you is some feedback. Are we hitting the right marks? Is there anything that we've left out that needs to be captured in those goals? Because that's the sort of you know that's almost the most important piece of all this what are you really trying to achieve with the project 
And of course, people have had different ideas, some of which are often mutually exclusive. So we want to make sure that the list is broad enough to encompass a flexibility of, a, of an approach and yet specific enough that you're actually achieving what, what you want to achieve. So we'll walk through those. Uh, then we can talk about the concept planning and let you know where we're at. And we, if we have time at the end, we can talk about some funding avenues in terms of dollars that are available. Um, and yeah, so we'll just jump right into it. So in terms of our overall schedule, uh, you'll recall we kicked it off uh, back in April. Uh, and then April 13th, we met with with you guys actually uh, to sort of learn a little bit of the more of the nuances. April 27th, we met with the senior housing team. Um, May 6th was when we came to town, set up a table for the, the public meeting on Founders Day, which was great. We learned so much there just from some passers by. Uh, and we can summarize some of those notes for you in a few slides. Um, May 31st, we had a, a great conversation. I think his name was Peter on the Conservation Committee. Um, it's an important part of the puzzle on this site, as of course you have the Bloody Brook running past. How close <laughs> can we get to the Bloody Brook in terms of permitting? How close do we want to get? Um, questions about the water table. I know that came up. So spoke with him, which was great. Uh, also not shown here, but Jenny uh, had a conversation with the police chief, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. uh, about the condition of the of that building and the future of that building, which we can get into with the concepts. But it's an important question. Let's not let it slip through the cracks, which is we've spoken, of course, about the, the current town hall being uh, taken offline, if you will. Uh, now, how about the police station is the is the other question i know it's connected it's all sort of one building right now um but you know that that wasn't part of the dialogue at the beginning but we sort of brought it up as like hey if you're eliminating the town hall why are you keeping the police station so it's just an open question um it, it certainly would open up doors in terms of the site plan if that program were also moved to a new location and we could sort of start from scratch there as, you, as you'll be able to see when we look at the site plan. Um, so late June, this is now, <laughs> we're meeting with you again. Uh, coming up is we'll just, so at following this meeting, uh, we'll really have done most of our public engagement and we will have done all of our stakeholder outreach. Uh, we'll have one more public meeting in September, which is where we plan to submit our draft concepts, but really for the uh, the next two months, we're just going to get into the, the site planning. You know, I think after today, we'll have learned everything we need to. And well, I should say before that, let's let's finalize this vision statement and goals. Today is the first stab at that. We'll present it to you, get your initial feedback. Uh, based on that, we'll revise it, send it to you. And then you can take another look, you know, read, read it a few times over, uh, mull it over, <laughs> send us the thoughts that you have, because Again, super important we get that right. Uh, and then we'll spend the rest of the summer uh, working on the site plan and figuring out, and refining it, coming up with a few uh, options that are different enough that each one of them are adding value, uh, but, e but that each of which are fulfilling those core goals. Um, yeah, we'll present it to the public in September. And after that, we'll be relatively uh, assured of the approach. That's when we can take our concepts to the rendering stage and make them look a lot more fulsome, photorealistic renderings, bird's eye perspectives, maybe a few street level views, and really visualize each of the concepts, which will, which should help you once you do work with a developer, RDI or whoever ends up developing the site, you can make it clear to them what you need to achieve as a community or what they need to help you achieve as a community, which is really important for the project outcomes. So uh, we go to the next slide, Jenny. Thank you. Sorry, my daughter's bringing me dinner. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Ooh, nice. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so prog So that's the progress today. If you could move on to the vision and goals, uh, Jenny. So, oh, and this is probably redundant with what I just walked through. You can keep going. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry. Totally stole the thunder. <laughs> you're, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> would have been so well, uh, so better if I uh, synced up with that. But oh yeah. So Jenny, do you want to walk through some yeah. of these? Yeah. 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 So these are just a few of the um, stakeholder sessions that we've had, and a few high-level bullet points of what we discussed during that time. So of course, with the first stakeholder session with senior housing, uh, we discussed the. Um, the notion that the congregational church building should be saved and used either for like a community center or some kind of senior programming. Um, another big point was promoting interconnectivity and placemaking within the campus and then creating supportive adaptive senior house that senior housing that allows for aging in place or aging in community as some people are calling it now. Um, stakeholder session two was with the conservation commission. So of course, with that conversation, we discussed uh, mining the wetlands around Bloody Brook, which have 100 foot setback buffers. And then the Bloody Brook itself has 200 foot buffers. Um, we also discussed the possibility for designing for nature education and passive recreation around the Bloody Brook, specifically to spotlight that um, those important ecosystems there. So this could include um, a trail system around the campus, for example, and then this was the other conversation that I had with the police chief, John Patrick. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing his name right, but we've tried. Pachurik. Uh, sorry? Pachurik, John Pachurik. Pachurik. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so he noted to us that the police building is aging. It does not really adequately address the needs of residents. Um, for example, their HVAC unit needs replacing, and it's a bit, you know, it's usable now, but especially in five, 10 years, it could become too small for the uh, police operations there. And then this is just a quick overview of Founders Day, which served as public meeting number one for us. So we brought out some boards and talked with some people about senior housing specifically, but also different programmatic options out on the campus in terms of green space, in terms of senior accessibility, uh, in terms of business opportunity and what other things should be involved um, in the making of this campus. Uh, so for housing typology, we found that homes are more desirable to seniors compared to apartments. Um, Non-age restricted is more appealing for seniors compared to age restricted. Affordability is of course a huge, um, a huge key piece of the conversation, not only in Deerfield, but in all communities in Western Mass and Massachusetts in general. Uh, young people especially need to have some affordable rentals as well. Um, in terms of business, business integration, small scale re retail is appealing in the campus. And there was also a few people who really wanna see an art center or a craft space uh, kind of within the community center that would allow people to gather, learn, uh, partake in activities, et cetera. Some other notes from Founders Day is of course, the preservation of the open space in the center. Of course, when we're talking about housing, this was a key component of trying to balance the, the housing that could be brought into this campus, uh, balancing it with the existing open space that is there and kind of defines the campus as it stands today. So we're talking about the baseball field specifically. Um, and then we also introduced the idea of public paths and that seemed to be desirable for members of the Deerfield community. And then there was also some questions about project timeline and cost as it, um, like who will fund the community center operations and volunteers maybe could partake in some of the work for designing or constructing certain elements of the municipal campus. That's definitely something to consider as well. And now I'm gonna hand it back over to Luke to discuss the vision and goals. Thanks, Jenny. And there are some important points in, in those slides. One thing that, well, so one thing that several people mentioned at Founders Day was they liked the scale of single family homes. So just to see what that would look like, we, we like quickly, modeled out of a, a single family house based on one that was located nearby and just tried to see, is there anything we could do to sort of start to introduce something like that on the site? But as, as you would guess, the site is so small that you're just not gonna get a volume of units. Um, 
it, it wouldn't be worth uh, no developer would really take much interest in it because of the, the and and you wouldn't really be addressing the housing issue in, in a very full way so we, <laughs> i think that's the answer if it ever comes up again and people are curious you know people say they don't like apartments they like houses and the answer is well there's a lot of houses in town. It's mostly single family houses. So there's plenty of, of single family homes in town. They don't, uh, not enough fit on this site to have a real project. Uh, not to mention that would privatize the land so much that there would, it would no longer be a community asset. So, but you'll see when we look at the 3D model, we do, we do have different options where we play with density. You know, what, one of them, not to jump ahead, but one of them is where we put all, uh, you know, everything in one building. And I think that we have a building with 40 units or between 35 and 40 units. Uh, we, we then split it up into three buildings of 12 units a piece uh, for, a, for a different approach, a little bit lower density. But then again, it, it, you, you could say, you could call it lower density, but then you have three buildings instead of, <laughs> instead of one. So uh, a lot to consider there, but then also the, the comment about intergenerational housing is something that we've been hearing a lot, not only in Deerfield, but elsewhere, um, which is that a lot of seniors say, I don't wanna be a senior housing. I wanna be mixed in with, with the rest of the community. Um, so that's something that we, we would ask you guys to put some thought into and whether that is gonna impact the goals for this project. You know, when, when we first started this dialogue with you, it was let's build senior housing. So that's what we're assuming currently. That's what we're working towards. But if, you know, that it's a question, which is, okay, do you want this to be potentially intergenerational housing? In other words, it can provide affordable housing for seniors. It could also provide affordable housing for young people, sometimes single, sometimes with families that could help boost the enrollment at the schools and enhance the workforce. The issue there is that the funding landscape is entirely different. Senior housing is like a path that many people travel and there's you know, standard ways of getting the, those projects subsidized through tax credits and tax incentives and things like that. Intergenerational housing is not something that there's a formula for, for getting it in public subsidies. So while it's great as a concept, it's just, it, it's much harder to make it pencil out Although we are continuing to look into it and doing research and finding are there programs out there that support these things? We're not, we so far we have, we've kind of come up short on our research, but it's become a big issue where we're working in Montague where that's exactly what they want to build is intergenerational housing. So we're, we're working with them to try to chip away at the question of how can you do that and still get the government to give you dollars to support it? Because when you think about it, a family uh, with the parents who are 35 or 40 and kids, that's people who can go earn money. So why would the government subsidize that, right? So it's a question, uh, but interested to hear your thoughts. So here's our draft vision statement. Uh, I'm just gonna read it out loud. Deerfield Municipal Campus will be a vibrant and inclusive hub that serves as the heart of our community, providing spaces for seniors, families, students, and visitors alike. The campus will help reinforce a sense of community and underscore Deerfield's commitment to all its citizens. Beyond increasing the supply of affordable housing for seniors, the campus will foster civic participation, encourage social gathering, and support educational and professional opportunities whilst providing a glimpse into Deerfield's rich past. So vision statement, very high level, right? Um, but it's important that it hits all the right notes. We thought that this sort of touched upon a lot of the things that have come up, but uh, you know, maybe we'll head right to over to the goals. But again, we'll send you all these things so that you can read it and, and really sort of maybe help us with some wordsmithing or whatever. But if you go to the next slide, Jenny, um, subordinate to the vision statement are the goals. Um, so we articulated five. So to recognize the vision for the Deerfield Municipal Campus, the town should endeavor to complete the following goals or objectives. One, improve Deerfield's housing affordability and downtown vibrance by increasing residential density. Facilitate the development of apartments for seniors in a medium density format that includes at minimum 35 
reasonably sized residences. All spaces must be accessible. Shared amenity space should include a laundry room and a shared kitchen. So whereas the vision statement can be high level and aspirational goals, we want to start to be a, be a little more specific over here. Um, so that's one. So again, this is assuming that this is housing for senior. So that's the question. Number two, protect and enhance existing open space and pedestrian access by limiting parking. This is something where we were being, we were editorializing a bit and sort of trying to push on this. If you guys want to push back, that's okay. You got to let us know. But we, we, to us, it would be great to put some actual numbers in this goal, which is limit the number of parking spaces built to XYZ spaces per unit plus XYZ spaces for visitors. So the, the idea here is 1.5 spaces per unit plus half a space per unit for visitors. Um, look, some places are more aggressive than that. They go down to one or 1 1.25 spaces per unit. But you typically see that in a place that's much more walkable, or I mean, Deerfield is walkable, but much more urban and built up, potentially with public transportation, you know, served by transit, so that people won't, in lieu of a car, will be able to take the bus or something. But the other factor here is that if it's mostly senior housing, how many cars does each unit really need, right? Is it two cars? I mean, I don't think it's two. Um, if we can get comfortable with dropping that down, it's really going to allow for more open space and a much more uh, visually appealing development if you can reduce the amount of parking. So look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on, on that. Uh, three, support Deerfield's engagement and inclusivity by creating a shared community space. So it's a modern community center that hosts a technology and or craft room and an open gathering space for public forums will support community engagement and group learning. So this is the part where we're talking about the community center. Uh, a lot of ideas have come up around the community center. Um, and by the way, I think we can probably be more specific here and pin it to the uh, the church where, where it will be located and state that explicitly that we're gonna convert the church into a, a community center and it should include the following spaces. So we can add that in. Four, enhance Deerfield's natural beauty by spotlighting the Bloody Brook and surrounding ecosystems. Path networks, open space, and educational signage will encourage use of the campus for active and passive recreation while preserving and protecting native ecosystems. This came up a lot. We want to make sure in the renderings to show that the Bloody Brook will be a community asset that's enjoyed and sort of emphasized and protected at the same time with the new uh, community campus. Five, promote community connections between the municipal campus and surrounding assets, emphasizing physical and programmatic connections between the campus and elementary school located on the other side of the brook, the Leary lot and uh, area businesses. Um, how that gets accomplished, you know, we, we again, we can add specifics. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's what we have. I think I think it's a good starting point. I'd like it to grow. Yes. Yeah, and I don't know if, if if any guys have comments, please. Now's the time. I, I think it's a great start. It, it looks um, well thought out. Kind of captures everything that I have in my mind. Uh, generally, uh, yeah. Looking forward to the modeling. Carolyn, um, I I think I agree a hundred percent. The scale of single family homes, we couldn't do that. Um, no. uh, and while we need affordable housing for all ages. The problem is we have, we've been trying to get senior housing in literally since Lily and I have been meeting since the last century. So we have a wait list of really needful seniors and 35 to 40 units is gonna put a good dent in it, but we still are gonna have a wait list. So I, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We have to have senior, this to be senior housing. Um, the vision statement sounds lovely. Uh, the, you know, it's it's very fancy, but yeah, like it. I uh, we like it. Uh, the parking, I think, again, you're. This is we want as much subsidized senior housing as we can get, and so um, 
I have no problem, and because we have a limited space, I have no problem having only one parking place per unit plus 0.5 spaces for visitors. I, I'm there's just nothing we can do. Uh, you know, we, we can't have the whole thing paved over. Um, number one, just because uh, the delineations are going to eat up a lot of space, you know, the wetlands delineations and stuff like that. But we're, we're encouraging walkability. We're encouraging stuff downtown. I think if you're coming into subsidized housing, you, you know, one car is going to be what's affordable. Um, we are, as a community, moving forward for the community center being at the church. Hopefully that work will start soon. Um, as chair of the conservation district, Franklin Conservation District, we just got the money in our account for um, Bloody Brook. And what we're doing is we have a watershed plan. We're working with the FERCOG on a, a Bloody Brook wa uh, watershed wide plan that will start to go to the conservation um, commission in town, the town's conservation commission. And what we're going to do is we're going to hire a uh, consultant, o Owen Wormser, to train our highway department in on maintaining the <clears throat> side. So we're going to rip out the invasives working with the Conservation Commission. It's, it's, it's junk. It's um, sumac and bittersweet and knotweed, which all encourages um, renovation, I mean, uh, erosion. And what we're going to do is renovate and uh, work on the brook so it's healthy. Because what happens is, is the flooding is at risk for all this infrastructure that we're putting in into the campus because it doesn't, uh, it's not able to handle these intense rain events like we had the, this week um, very well. And then on the periods of drought, we're having um, this certain mosquito. <laughs> Uh, 80s um, elbow pictus is has really evolved in the last 10 years. We ha have, you know, three times what we were catching in Deerfield 10 years ago, and that's the bad mosquito. They've are day biters now, and they can breed really easily. But what the problem is, that's your disease carrying mosquito. So when we have periods of drought, the, literally the river becomes brook becomes stagnant. So we need to have it be a healthy brook. So the money that with the conservation uh, district has gotten is to work to make the brook beautiful. And with Owen Wormser, we're going to plant pollinator on uh, native plants along the brook. So it'll be beautiful, but it will also, you know, the root systems will simplistically absorb the water in, in events, high of, uh, rain events, and then release the water after it's filtrated and then and absorb stormwater runoff. And then this buffer will release water, you know, release to, during drought periods so that you will have a much healthier brook. I mean, it's complicated. There's a lot of other right. things involved, but basically that's it. So I'm 100% supportive of what you're saying right here. This is great. Okay. Is question on that, is that how much of the Bloody Brook is that project going to touch? Is it going to touch our part portion in this in this mm -hmm. area? From Frontier all the way down to um, oh. uh, uh, Street. It's quite a long that's, stretch. That's excellent. That sounds like a great and, project. And we're going to work with, we have several homeowners along North Main Street that have signed up to work with us as, you know, group. They're already... Um, working with Owen Worms or two. So the goal is to have the majority of the brook in Nor in Deerfield, um, you know, from North Main Street Bridge all the way down. Do um, you, Carolyn, do you have a write-up somewhere of the exact treatment that will be done that you could share? Um, well, we have to go through the Conservation Commission. So, I mean, other than just saying we're gonna rip up everything, I mean, you have to have a plan, but it will be basically ripping up the invasives that only create more problems and then replace it with your pollinator native plants that will provide a pollinator garden and be beautiful, but also have the ability to have much more root system that will support 
you know, um, a, a healthier buffer. The key to this is to having a healthy buffer. And Owen, yeah. part of the grant will be to train the highway department on maintenance because it's a low maintenance once you get it established. Um, but you have to stay on top of invasive because invasives like knotweed is gross. You know, you have to. It, it, it does part of that project include putting a trail along the, the brook? No, it's just the establishment of the buffers on both sides of the brook. Okay. The town owns from frontier down both sides of the brook. So should we, in our concepts, should we show a trail that runs alongside the brook? What do you guys think? Well, that was the idea um, that we had right from the beginning is you would have a loop, a walking loop, so yeah. that people in the, uh, the, in the senior housing, but you would also be able to walk, well, we originally envisioned walking from the town hall area all the way up to our park. Um, and you would not have to um, ever go out on the street, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely having a having a, a, a walk walking area with benches is really key. Okay. Okay. Um, Andrea, do you have your yeah. hand raised? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm from the open space committee, and I'm thinking I don't I'm not thinking of it so much as a trail system as sidewalks. You know, more like um, regular sidewalks that would be available for people to walk around. If you're thinking trails, then the open space committee could perhaps weigh in on some of that. But let me. Yeah, I think. Well, I think what we were pitching for a lot of this site, you know, not close to the brook, is probably more hard pavers for for pathways and stuff. But closer to the brook, if there was an appetite for a trail that ran along the brook, which it sounds like there is. That would be more of a natural uh, path, I think. Um, but you know, we can play around with the, with the concepts and maybe and revisit it when we get to that point. I we think it's at at this point just to, good sure to know with this. Whether it's a trail system or sidewalks or whatever, it just needs to be ADA compliant. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then of no. course, we, you know, there's a connect, direct connection to the school, so we want to emphasize that also with the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Luke, I was just going to make a couple of comments on that. I, th I think a lot of this is great and it's interesting because it it mirrors and expands what we already have for CCI. Um, I think we probably shared that with you. And I think that's really good. One thing that I'm not seeing, unless I totally missed it, which I could have, is energy, anything pertaining to energy. Which oh, yes. Thank you. Added. Which um, is the geothermal? Well, you know, geothermal or, you know, just doing mini splits. I mean, we're just trying to get away from fossil fuels, be mini splits, uh, solar, you know, any number of things. I mean, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get that federal, federal geothermal grant, but, you know, we'll just keep looking. But, um, yeah, I mean, part of our mission is structures designed for accessibility, energy efficiency, and anticipated impacts of climate change. So, I mean, that's I got a big you. Yeah, we, we'll, we can add one for that specifically. Yeah. Um, okay, great. So yeah, we'll, we can, um, in the interest of time, we'll jump into the concepts, but we'll send the send that verbiage to you. Maybe we'll touch it up based on those comments and then get that over to you for, for review. Right. Um, so yeah, Jenny, if, unless there's any other slides that we wanted to walk through. We had a few on the precedent designs. Um, oh, that's worth, that's in. actually worth sharing. Yeah, if you could okay. share those, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just come up through this. Yeah. So this was one that was brought up to us during uh, Founders Day, um, which is right off of uh, Mount Sugarloaf, which is actually kind of um, funny because I like remember watching this get built. I would hike up Mount Sugarloaf when I was in grad school and like this thing would be getting built. Uh, so this is Snowberry Circle. And so we just like, we're looking at some of these homes and trying to fit some of these duplexes. We were trying to map them out in our concepts and see how many we could fit on site. And we just weren't hitting the numbers. This is what we've been talking about before. Like we weren't hitting the right. numbers that we needed to um, in order to make this financially feasible. Um, they would, they were just going to have to be like on top of each other. And at that point, you're losing all sense of the municipal campus. 
And very expensive. And very expensive. Um, Sanderson Place was something that has been brought up mm -hmm. a lot to us. Uh, so this is a friendly 40B in Sunderland, Massachusetts. Uh, so it's um, age restricted and it is affordable. 17 units are at 60% of AMI. Um, so this is one that I think design wise mm -hmm. was very appealing for a lot of people in the area. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have the municipal um, town halls and town centers that we reviewed at our previous mm. meeting in April. So this is um, in Sharon, I mean, one in Dedham. And then this is the Middleton Municipal Center. Um, so these are just something that we kept in our back pocket in mind when we were um, designing the mm -hmm. concepts. So I think from here, I'll stop sharing this and bring in the, the model. Okay, can you see the building no. model? No, not yet. Okay, hold on. Can you see that now? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Again, this, you know, this is 3D modeling software, so it, it's not final looking. Um, it's really just the shapes. So uh, we're, we're in the, still in the ideation mode. Uh, final products will, will be more polished and rendered. But I think this can give you a sense, though, of our initial sort of creative exploration of, of the site's potential. So this is the existing conditions, right? Mm -hmm. You have over on the left, the town hall with the police department connected to it on the right. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else there is to point out about it. Now, Jenny, does that building that your cursor is on now, is that the existing condition or the future condition? Once this is finished? existing. Yep, this oh, is the existing. So, so that doesn't include the addition that will- Right. Go, right, okay. Um, and then the library, of course, will also be expanded, which it's not, this isn't showing now, again, it's right. just existing conditions. But important to note that we did uh, include that site up top, um, which we have spoken with you guys about adding to the mix. It wasn't there originally, but then the idea became, let's explore whether this could be part of the solution. So it's a bit awkward in terms of the shape. Um, yep. The frontage is limited. It's it like it like goes like this towards the street, um, which is somewhat unfortunate because, of course, frontage is very important for the curb appeal of a piece of property. So, mm. uh, and it, it's so we we've done what we can, and you'll see when we get into our options, it, it can be a bit challenging to put a larger building over here, especially without removing the historic church. In fact, I think only if you remove the historic church were we able to fit right. a 12 plex building over there in any reasonable way and still have room for parking. The, the fact is you have a lot of uh, wetlands um, behind that. Mm -hmm. Jenny, do, does this model include the buffers and- Yes. Yeah, so this is from the wetland delineation. Let me just transparent. So you can see this is the um, this is the wetland buffer of 100 feet. Yeah. This is the 200 foot buffer from the brook itself. Wow. And the same thing over here. This is the wetland buffer 100 feet. So you just need a lot of permitting within these areas. And according to the Conservation Commission, it's just not really feasible to build anything you know, on this parking lot or anything, just because it is so far into the buffer zones at that point. And of course, with any development that you have, even like the 12 plex, if we were just to do a 12 unit building here, of course, you'd have to accommodate for a whole bunch of parking. So you'd end up just cutting into a lot of this buffer zone. Wow. So, so yeah, I think this is helpful. It showed show, looking at the buffer because that, mm -hmm. that's really has a, a major impact on the developability of the site. And clearly, I mean, look, the, if 
I'm sure you guys have a good understanding of buffers and how they work. It doesn't mean you can't build anything in it. It just means that it's op it's subject to review by the conservation commission if you're within the buffer. Mm -hmm. um, it, again, you you can still build things within the buffer, but the closer you get, the likelier it is that it, based on the CONCOM's interpretation of state law as promulgated by the DEP, that uh, you're, you're going to be limited on what you can do. Yeah, uh, Luke, yeah. Yes. I, I just, I spoke with Lily earlier and asked about that. I mean, I know that Berkshire Design did um, get that back to you and I hadn't really looked at it. So she said that their next step is to go to the CONSCOM before, because obviously we're not going to buy land if we can't develop it. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we still have to, and Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't had a chance yet to get into that uh, file and open it up, but we will do so. The wetland delineation? Yeah. This is the data from the wetland delineation. Oh, this is here? This no. is, yeah, this was our original. So we had the original oh, 100 foot buffer. Yeah. This thing. So it extends further according oh. to the wetland delineation. Oh, look at that. Okay. This is the wetlands 100 foot buffer. So it's fairly comparable. There's a few gaps here. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, so definitely yes. the current delineation data that we just got is more expansive than the one, than the data that was from DEP, you know, from whenever it was last so, so that sort of blue greenish shade is wetland. It's not a buffer, mm -hmm. it's what? This is the buffer, no, this is buffer zone here. Okay, gotcha. Um, so yeah, it's a wet, that part of the site is quite wet versus the t current town hall, obviously drier. So there's more potential over there. Um, so th that's an important part of it. Um, okay, so if you wanna maybe open up the first. Yeah. Uh, is the first one the most dense or the, or the biggest buildings or the smaller ones? Maybe we'll start at the, the 40 uh, unit. Yeah. So this, so first of all, I did model the, the new addition on the town hall over here and the addition on the library. So that just kind of, this is what the site would look like if the town hall was de demolished and then those additions were built in. That looked like a small addition on the town hall. This is was, what I had yeah. from the from the oh, document right. from the designs. Not, that's not with the large edition. That's just the elevator, right? This uh, is, is there is there an, another volume planned for behind that elevator? Yes, yeah. I mean, I mean, okay. general that that was our original idea way back with um, get through the architect was to do a, a, a kind of, almost a mirror image of the of the building. We didn't need it that big, but that was kind of the first by, you know, just real quick pass at it. Mm -hmm. but I, I may be in the more minority on that view, but I'm always about space and just don't have enough. Well, we, we have to build, if we're going to build something, it has realistically it has to be at least for 50 years, but yeah. in reality, it's a hundred year build. So we're right. not going to build something that's just too small. Right. All right. There. Yeah. So is there a plan to make this bigger? Yes, I, I would love it. Yeah, yeah, sure. And two yeah, stories. We'll, we'll review the drawings that we have. I don't know if they show that volume you're talking about, Trevor, but we'll take a look. I, and I could. There's a uh, there's a schematic drawing that we probably have on line two. Chief Paturic had, and we have some right. like easel things at town hall. I could show you what it what it kind of looked like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That info. So so in this option the police station stays so this one assumes that that mm -hmm. can't be moved or it doesn't yep. where people don't want it to be moved or something mm -hmm. um we wanted to make sure that we included that um obviously it's limiting when you keep right. that building there it makes yep. for a slimmer development pad with less mm -hmm. street frontage yep. um so what we so the exercise here was how can we fit a 40 unit building in a reasonable way given those constraints Yep. So we, we basically turned it lengthwise, which is not ideal uh, mm -hmm. for the curb appeal of the building, but also it's been done before. <laughs> um, but we, as you can see, you would enter on the sort of lower right there, 
um, there's, or, or, yeah, that's right. And then there's uh, something of a pickup drop off in, fr in front of the, oh, sorry, I'm missing it actually. Uh, it, the real pickup drop off is down here. And I know you can't see my mouse, but close to where Jenny's uh, cursor yeah. is now. So that you can pull in, uh, pick, you know, taxis, Ubers, uh, people dr dropping their mother off, they can use that as the pickup drop off. Meanwhile, if you live there or you're parking to stick to, to visit somebody there, uh, all the parking that you need on both sides of the drive aisle, which wraps around the building. Uh, in the back is really just an exit road and also an access road for emergency vehicles. Um, loading, I guess, could be accomplished back there. We haven't really gotten into that level of detail that much, but you can see a sort of place on the upper left where there could be like dumpsters or, or that sort of thing. Um, so back of the house is, at one point we had this flip the other way and then we realized we need to hide the back of the house stuff <laughs> from the rest mm -hmm. of the, the campus. So we that's sort of back of the house uh, where you're either exiting that property or doing some loading or, or trash hauling or something like that. So in other words, the real, the front, the real front door uh, of the building faces the police station and there'd be some sort of plant planted buffer between the two uses um, because the police station isn't particularly you know visually uh, appealing <laughs> so we'd probably put some screening there which we'll show in the final rendering um, but as you can see some outdoor spaces and really the on the ground floor the two the brown and the blue suggest uh, non-residential uses, uh, community uses on the ground floor. Uh, and with some pedestrian walkways wrapping around the building and some areas for outdoor seating, et cetera. The, what we like about this option, when you put all, un all of the units in one building, is that you're still left, you have a whole lot of land left over as open space out back. Right. Uh, in fact, you're not really eating much further into it than, than the current building already is. So that's great. The, the ball field, it might need to be moved a little bit, but you could have the ball field there. Or you can just keep it as a, I mean, for my, <laughs> for my money, you could get a really great landscape architect and make a really nice park there uh, with, you know, with very minimal trails and seating and just like really nice pavers really sophisticated design you can make a, a great uh, park there especially given all the neighborhood connections um so that i think that's the good thing about this concept uh now jenny could you turn on if if you could that buffer layer just so we see how that relates to this concept yeah Natalie has a question oh sorry uh, Natalie, go no, ahead. Thank, you. thank you i i imagine that your um parking spaces are based on those larger parking requirements. Um, I'm, I certainly would hope that maybe we could have less um, parking, asphalt, whatnot. Um, it's, it feels like there's just, this whole building is just encircled by concrete. Yes. Jenny, do you, do you remember how many, what the um, ratios are that we used? It says 56, is that everything or just there? at that location? Uh, it's a little bit different for everything, especially once we get down to like the 12 plexus. Um, but we yeah. tried to do one and a half spaces, but of course, like some of these, depending on how big the rooms are, you could fit between 35 to 40 units here. So if you fit 35 mm -hmm. units here, you'd need like one and a half spaces per unit. If you did 40, it'd be a little under one and a half spaces per unit. So it depends yeah. on how big, you know, architecturally you want the rooms to be or the units to be rather. Um, yeah. And yeah, with this, then you'd also have to kind we of can, consider. I think, Anna, Anna Lee, we're, we're going to really hone in on that and make it as minimal as possible. And then no matter yeah. how you skin it, you're going to notice parking. But we could also, for example, I don't know, Jenny, what you used for the spacing of those lines, but we could go down to eight or nine feet. Typical is 10. That's a much more comfortable parking if if you're you want your space to be 10 feet there's parking lots that where you start to slim them down like our parking lot at work jenny which is maddening to try to park because the cars are so close well, together but it saves space and especially if you've got a walker and you're getting out of the car and that you need that's some true space. you do that's need true space. Too. 
Yeah, these are at nine feet right now, nine yeah. foot widths. Okay. okay, but that's a good point, Trevor. Yep. Um, well, we have know, we, we yeah. need to have more handicapped spaces as well. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I haven't blocked those in yet because we're still yep. preliminary. Yep. Yeah, but yeah. We, we certainly will. And we'll show, we'll mark them on the plan as such. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So, buffers. This is a already a disturbed area because there's a building there. So, I think that that means that there's some greater relief in terms of being able to build there. It's not making the existing condition worse. Although it might be a little, <laughs> but well, but at some point we're going to get back with the conservation commission and, and sort of share some of these options with them and just to get it some perspective. So if if we just to keep it moving, mm -hmm. we did a version of this, which was a forty unit mm -hmm. building. And by mm -hmm. this, by the way, when I say forty, uh, it's more like thirty five to forty, right? Depending on how much of it is non residential. But that assumes a healthy size unit of around a thousand, eight or nine hundred or a thousand square feet, bigger than what you see in Sunderland. We heard that from a lot of people. We need to have real apartments here, not tiny little shoe boxes. Right. Um, you know, it needs to. You know, people want to have some dignity and live in a nice, nice sized apartment. So uh, we want to make sure that everything we draw allows for that. So I think the. I think our assumption was a thousand, which is probably a little bit more than it needs to be. But, um, but at any rate, when when we finalize these concepts, we can provide a space program that states mm -hmm. explicitly how big the units are and how many there are, et cetera, how many bedrooms, whatever. Um, so, in this version, we imagined a world in which the police can, can be relocated to a different location. Yeah, uh, which obviously opens up. Um, possibilities for placemaking. It mm -hmm. gives you more breathing room. So we uh, flip the building 90 degrees to give it a lot more frontage, uh, a little bit more of a ceremonious pickup drop off um, access road um, with some nice sidewalk alongside of it. Um, and then parking to the side and to the rear of the building with it look it may look a little funny on the plan but you you have a, a turnaround yeah. at the end of the driveway it was either that or pull that road all the way back down to, around the building and, and the building would again be surrounded by asphalt which right. uh, which we had at one point and it just didn't it sit right with us uh too much asphalt yep so what so there's some good things about this option i love this uh over here on the on the right side of the screen Mm -hmm. the connect you now have this corridor for pedestrians and bicyclists leading to the open space mm -hmm. um that is an amenity for the people in the building an amenity for the the newly redeveloped building to the right uh and and yeah and you know what jenny we should, when we get to the end of the project we should really make some street level renderings at, at, from yeah. a perspective like this just to yeah, emphasize totally. that um but this is something that can really just connect across to the community and, and give them invite people into the space mm -hmm. um which again could be an a awesome landscape architecture uh project one day if once you get the um things happening out here so this too has outdoor programming more space for that in fact to the right side of the building we took that first floor and pulled out the volume a little bit uh to make it a little more visible that could have you could have some nice community spaces in there with windows on two sides mm -hmm. uh and we can we can showcase that in the final renderings which is you know heavy fenestration on the first floor give it a different treatment than the floors above it to mark it as community space which can serve the residents but also other people in the community um and just to note i colored so this light coloring is like community slash public spaces um, mm -hmm. I had this idea over here for the blue as like private amenity spaces. This, this is where you could have like laundry or an exercise yeah. room specifically dedicated to the seniors living in that uh, building. So those are just some ideas. But of course, you can like change how big, you know, you can have some residences mixed down here if you want to, or you can change the sizing. Um, I just thought like this 
it's big enough so that you could have 35 units on these three floors and then have the amenity spaces down here, depending on, again, how big you want the units themselves to be. So in the interest of time, we'll keep moving. But by the way, as you guys can see, these we're just sort of putting placeholder buildings, but we did want to make sure that it had pitched roofs yep. and something that looks somewhat traditional. We we don't yep. we we assumed based on what we well we heard we were told by I think some of you as well as people in the community that they weren't interested in the in a sleek contemporary flat roofed sort of uh, look right. look and feel. It's got to be contextual. So all right, this the in this con in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Police station stays, we have three 12 plexes for a total of 36 units, two of which are located next to the police uh, station, one of which is located uh, up top with the, with the old, is it St. Peter's Church? Gone. St. Peter's? St. James. 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 Sorry, St. James. James. Uh, with St. James, unfortunately, going away to accommodate the building. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I think the plan speaks for itself. It's smaller buildings, has sort of a, a lighter touch. There's some open pockets of open space in between the buildings, um, relatively rational approach for the parking lot. Um, and yeah. It, oh, and this this starts to show the path. Oh yeah, so, it, so in this scenario, mm -hmm. to the rear of the building, uh, you can see the pathway that's extending from the street in between the building and the back of the property yeah. over to the, um, the primary school, et cetera. Um, could you zoom over to the other building yeah. up top, Jenny? And sort of show that it's, yeah, so you can make some, okay. So say that the church goes away and the rectory, you can make a, a project work here. Um, it's kind of tight and limited, by again the buffers and the lack of street frontage uh, is it doable uh, we think so mm -hmm. um but it gets, it's a little tight though um now the the next option is one in which the police do we have one where the police station is relocated for the i yeah. think you do yes oh sorry hold on this guy Right. So this is similar to the first one with the third building tucked over here, uh, which has a lot of, I think, merit relative to the last one in that. And again, these these are high level concept plans to, to test the yield of the site. Once you really got an architect on board designing this, you see a lot of room for flexibility here and creativity uh, in terms of how they lay it out. But again, you have more breathing room. Um, I think both of these exercises are helpful in showing what the value could be of relocating the police station. Um, but here, you know, again, I think the idea for that upper left space could be outdoor seating, could also be community gardening, something that we heard is a popular idea. Um, so that concept, Three. What's concept three? Remind me, Jane. Ah, uh, yes. Do you want to talk about that one? Yeah. So this was just an idea that I took from. I took some inspiration from Sanderson Place to design this building, where you have all of your residential units kind of in this corridor, but then you have your kind of public. You know, if you have additional need for community space outside of the congregational church, you could have some of that here. You could close some of it off and make it private. Um, but I thought this could be a good way to kind of integrate seniors into the community center a little bit. Um, so that way there's a component to like the community um, belonging and inclusivity right in the building. So it's still separate, but it has, you know, a shared corridor here and you could have some like programming out here for people who want to come in and come in and out to the, um, to the campus green, et cetera. So this was just like another idea that I tossed around in my head um, that kind of blends a few of the components of different concepts that we had already planned and makes it a little bit different just to have some more variety in here. 
<clears throat> Thanks, Jenny. So, yeah, that's that's where we are, uh, and again, a work in progress. But I think there's there's some good optionality, uh, and definitely curious to hear folks' thoughts on all of that. I guess, uh, Luke, my first question is, and you know, I'm not sure because I'm not on senior housing, so I'm not familiar with the friendly 40B. But I'm not sure, I mean, whether it's an issue that you have buildings separated that far, um, whether that's doable within a friendly, friendly 40B, I don't really know. And also, I mean, you know, that concept I think is interesting, but that definitely is going to hinge on what the CONSCOM says. And I can't imagine that the town is going to spend $500,000 to buy that piece of property to tear something down and then put another building up. So that I view is an issue. To tear, oh, the, the same. Yeah, the, the to tear, yeah, tear that down and then put another building up and still, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, the other thing is, and I know that a lot of this hinges on the ball field and I understand we need a ball field, but, you know, that seems like that's really holding us back from doing other designs. And, you know, I really don't know. I know, you know, our rec department will say, well, Deerfield Academy donated that so many years ago. Well, you know, things change too. I don't know if we can, if there's another place for a ball field. It's my understanding that there is currently one at the elementary school, but it's not as nice as this one. And I don't know, Carolyn, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I mean, we have property on Brayburn. We have to just get access to it. So you know yeah but, which would be perfect and i i have to agree i don't even though i like the concept of broken up buildings i don't think we're going to get funding for it though the whole point of senior housing is to take it and get funding um through uh financing like sanderson place did so right. it's a cost to the town so you know we have to have unfortunately i think one building to make it economically viable yeah. to do that. So even though having a campus split buildings, I just don't see that happening either. Um, just because the, other, the town doesn't have the ability to take on the financing itself. We're, we're going out to get financing. So to build senior housing. Um, the friendly 40B is going to allow us to work in the buffer, but you're gonna have some restrictions. You, that means you have to replicate um, wetlands and you know your, your more rigid stormwater requirements and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say that the buffer, you know, and by St. James Church, it's obviously the paved area is already degraded. So um, you know we have some ability to add on to maybe the house there, you know. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of things that we have to consider about that property, but we also, how much are we going to end up paying for it? So, right, right. You know, that's going to add in too. It, you know, it seems like the lady wants to work with us, present owner. Um, so well, we're, we're hopeful, but if it won't. can work. Yeah. Um, Julie, Julie has her hand up. Hi. Um, I love all the all the designs that you've done and this gives a lot of great ideas. Can you guys hear me? I'm in my car. Yes. So, but I'm parked, so I'm not driving while I'm looking at your pictures. Um, <laughs> That's great. Um, just a couple thoughts. One is that we're, we're building this big extension on the library, which has a fairly large meeting room in it. And we're going to have in the, it sounds like in the church, you're recommending that we would have community space in that church. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like maybe we don't want to spend the money or the space on a lot of community space in the senior housing building as well, just a thought. And then the other thought is on that ball field. Um, I actually don't agree with you at all, Denise. I think it's really important that we keep that ball field there. And this is why. Um, one is that it's used a lot. It's used for baseball in the, in the spring, but it's used for soccer in the summer and the fall. And so, you know, it's like a three season heavily used space. And if you relocate it, I feel like 
people are used to the ball field being there, and a ball field brings a lot of traffic and a lot of noise. So if I lived on Brayburn or Main Street and you were going to put a ball field in my backyard, I, I feel like there would be a lot of pushback from the people that are around that, and I think it's going to be very difficult to put a new ball field in someplace else in town. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, well, just to anticipate a lot of complaints from the seniors in the senior housing. <laughs> They'll need triple pane windows. But you know, they also want to be around younger people. Yeah, no, that's true. Good point. So that brings younger people in proximity. Well, it, it just sounds like a lot is going to hinge on that conversation with the Conservation Commission, Luke. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that would be great if that could happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, and Car Carolyn's right that because it's 40B, you know, that process will be um, expedited and sort of collapsed into a comprehensive uh, permit, right, process. So, um, and I think, Carolyn, as you mentioned, it doesn't mean that you can skirt all environmental regulations, but uh, that there's a process that allows you to sort of move more swiftly. Um, so, I, I, yes, we sh we'll circle back with them on that one. I think it's going to have a huge impact. One more what... in, in a oh, no, go ahead, Julie. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm being Miss Debbie Downer, and I, I don't feel that way at all, but I'm just going to throw one other thought out there, which is the replacement of the um, lease station. Um, I think financially that would be really hard to do anytime soon yeah. because of the fairly big building projects that we have going on. Um, so maybe like either after we're done paying off the highway garage or after we're done paying off the library, that might be the time to start, um, not start thinking about, but mm -hmm. have a, some, a new project kick in. But I think suggesting it right now um, is challenging. Um, I agree with Julie. Uh, it's just, it would be just one more thing, but yeah. um, it depends. The next thing that we have to really line up is, you know, when the appraisal comes in for that property on the north end there, um, whether we move forward or not, that's going to be key. And then once we approach, like I say, the, we, the conservation district has already got the grant to do work on Bloody Brook. So we're going to start that process pretty soon. Hopefully we'll have the information on the appraisal and whether we're gonna move forward or not as a town. And then we can talk with the Conservation Commission about how, how they feel about that property, how much is truly um, developable. And that will determine really some of this other, some of these other issues mm -hmm. um, that we're talking about. Yep. Um, and Does Luke, that help any with the ball field? Like if we bought that property but didn't build anything big on it, could we shove the ball field up that way farther and give us more space down this end around the police station? I, it's going to be determined what the conservation district, I mean, what the conservation commission, the Deerfields Conservation Commission feels, um, you know, what what we're going to talk about you know, these concepts of moving the building, you know, having all these buildings different places is wonderful because we, then we have ability to talk with the commission and see what they have in mind. Uh, I don't, you know, Pete Law and, and Kate Devlin are wonderful to work with. They have already um, met with us a couple times or at least once <clears throat> and got information on what their, some of their concerns are. So I, I feel like we have some flexibility working in the Bloody Brook, but it really depends, it, uh, you know, what, whether we include that property or not. Right, right. 
And look, not not this design, but the other one where you keep the police station. It seems as though there there still seems to be enough room that that could be added on to. I don't know. I mean, well, and I agree with I agree with Julie. I think we shouldn't be doing that now. But you know, we've got a well, plan for the future. That one. Yeah, what what came to my mind when when Julie said that is perhaps we could make explore designs that could be built in phases so that you build the, cause you don't want to wait to be able to move the police station. Who knows when that's going to happen. So build the first phase. And then when the police station can come down it can be added onto it, which may be what you're saying. Um, it, so I, I don't know if, if that's, I don't know if developers would, would like that. Uh, it might turn them off, but it, it's something to consider. Yeah. I guess the next question, does the police station, does it all have to be on one level? Where can you build up? But, sorry? Does it all have to be on one level? Can it be two stories? The, the police station? Yeah. Well, the problem is you need intake bays and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, yeah, no, I realize that, but, you know, for other offices, do, do they all need to be downstairs? I don't, you know, I, I know it's sort of getting ahead of ourselves, but. Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to dump any money into this building because it's, yeah, it's pretty right. marginal. I don't want to say what I really think it is, but. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it, it really is a marginal building. So, yeah. uh, the only do we keep it or we rip it down the only problem is we we're we got the community you know the church we got this other purchase of another church we got the town hall going i mean there's just too many projects right now the library um you know lo relocating the police station ripping that down and relocating the police station is you know another eight to ten million dollars we just don't have that well, no, that's true. But I, th I think what I, what I like about the designs is that they're all different and it's really giving us pause for thought on what we should do and not just what sh we should do now because we know what our projects are. But is that something that we can do five years from now or so? You know, I mean, we, na we have to plan now because <laughs> if we don't plan now, when we get to that point, then we won't know what to do. Right. So. Yeah, and the good thing about our deliverable for you guys. Some of these things you're not going to decide by the time we're done our work. Right. So we can we can illustrate scenarios in which the police station can go away, and we can illustrate ones in which it can't go away. Yeah. So that you can, once these decisions are made or whatever, you you'll still have things in your back pocket. Now the 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 I so Carolyn and Denise, you both mentioned you don't believe that separate buildings would be financeable via 40B. Is that something that you've read that there's a restriction that, that it has to be a single building instead of separate buildings? Oh, no, it's just that um, it's more when you do that separate buildings, it's gonna be it cost. We're already pushing the envelope because we're not building enough units. So, um, you know, 35 to 40 units is like minimal. You know, it's about the minimum you know that yeah. you can get financing gotcha. for yep. and um it, d having it split up into three two or three different buildings or whatever is just more expensive per square foot and i i don't feel like we're probably going to luck out and get financing um unfortunately that's all but that doesn't mean we can't you can't look at it some more and no. maybe we will get financing um, it's just yeah I think I think we should it's a great point and I think we should explore questions of cost with potentially reaching out to some contractors sharing showing some images to them and ask questions like that like you know but two buildings located very proximate to one another can share the same physical plant right they can you pipe stuff underground and stuff like that you're right that you're building two structures so it's going to be more per square foot um but really interesting questions that we should uh put a pin in all of those yep i'm, I'm not saying it's not possible it's just right. the two yeah. or three evenings that we talked about financing 
it, it was clear it had to be sort of the model of Sanderson in the sense that you got one big giant building and Okay. Another question for you. As you said, 3540 is sort of minimum. If we're able to draw something that has more, is it? Oh, no, that that's fine. Yeah. Would be, well, right. You guys would be amenable we're, to that? 50, 60 yeah. units, something like that? Yes, because that drives down the price. So it makes it more attractive, you know, yes. per, per, per square foot cost. So it's yep. more attractive for us to get more financing. Oh, okay. So yeah, we've always been sort of limiting ourselves to 30. I guess 35 is the minimum. Yes. Um, but we can definitely explore ways to to juice that up a little bit. Um, if uh, there's certainly, it, you're not limited by demand, right? And so many people who need senior housing, as you said. And, no. I, and, I know, and I know Sanderson filled up quickly and a lot of the senior housing in Massachusetts always fills up pretty quickly, especially when it's affordable. Yeah. Um, so that maybe we'll consider that increasing this the scale I, you know in as much as how possible that is yes and by the way so you oh well i guess that wouldn't be financial but so, somebody mentioned the idea of putting some units in the existing is it rectory is that what it's called the, the, yeah so right. yeah i just i don't know how that would be financeable as part of the 40b project but Oh yeah, no, but that's what Sanderson Street did is they they had bought the farmhouse and they put three or four units. I, I can't remember, maybe it's only- but that, but that was adjacent to the new building. Right, that, well, that yeah. was part of the parcel. Right. They bought the farmhouse and then they had to keep the farmhouse because they wanted that on the frontage of the street. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why the, their Sanderson place looks like a, supposed to look like a tobacco barn from the road. Right. Oh yeah, it's a very unique building. Yeah. And so, but that's what they did. They put apartments in the in the actual farmhouse. So if we bought the rectory depart, you know, we, you know, that would, we put some units in there, potentially in the church, whatever, you know, you'd have to do something with that property. Yes. Yeah, and I think we can, Jenny, next time we take a pass at this one, maybe can we, you know, just ju amplify the building, make it get, make it a little longer, add some more units. We don't want to eat too much into the open space or the buffer. <laughs> so we're kind of limited. We're, we're a bit hogtied by all these different constraints, but we'll try to mac max it out a little more. Uh, Anna Lee, do you have your hand up? Oh, you're you know, muted. Muted. I'm sure you wouldn't do this anyway, but there's been a strong feeling of not wanting to look like it's Cabrini Gardens, you know, uh, you know, uh, warehousing. <laughs> um, right. Yep. So you wouldn't do that anyway, but that, that's been strongly stated. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll probably stay limited to four stories. Uh, well, I guess this is four and a half stories. But um, I, that's a, that's sort of I can't picture a five-story <laughs> building. Well, I don't know. I mean, could you guys? I, I should ask you. Really, the problem is that becomes so outsized compared to other yeah, exactly in the area. We we're we're trying to keep a neighborhood feel. Um, we want we wanted balconies on the you know each unit to have balconies. I know you said. People want like a thousand feet, but square feet apartments. But actually, in the end, it, it wasn't so much the apartment size in Sanderson Place when we visited. It seemed to be the apartment size was fine, but the hallways were very narrow. Oh, yeah. Make sure our hallways were, you know, you could get two wheel, wheel, wheelchairs by each other or two walkers by each other. In Sanderson Place, it, you can't. And and uh, yeah. even the handicapped bathrooms, huge giant space. But then the actual shower space was really too small. So if you had a walker to go into the shower, you, you didn't have enough space in there. I, I was, it, it the bathroom design was not good, which you're not concerned about that now. But we're, there, we just felt it was really important. The ground floor needed, to have access to a like a patio area 
uh, in each unit. And then the upper units would have actual balcony, just a small space, but just so you had your own private outdoor space. Um, you know, you had lovely views in Sanderson, but you couldn't get outside and and you only had yep. communal space. And, you know, if you're not feeling well or you are not social or <laughs> you know, have some quiet time, there was no place that you had privacy. So it, it's not criticizing Sanderson, please. It's there. It's wonderful. But that was the kind of thing that we wanted to make sure our design whatever design we came up with incorporated because that was what we felt needed improvement. Anna Lee, was there anything else that I missed on that? Hey, Carolyn, yeah. I, th I think before we move forward with that, I think it would be a great idea to go in and interview the, the people who live in Sanderson Place and say, hey, if you ha could do it over, what would you like? No, we, you know? we, we've, we've intended to do that. Yeah. I mean that we we made a list of stuff initially and then we're going to do a follow up. Yeah. Um That's great. make sure that we don't uh that we incorporate everything that people felt was positive and try mm -hmm. to the negative. Yeah. Well. Well this uh, the, all of these designs are really interesting Luke and Jenny. So thank you. I think it's no problem. Got yeah, the wheels um, turning. So the only thing I would really love you to do is to um, look at the library design a little bit uh, more because the library design is a little bit canted, I think, more. Um, the picture. Mm -hmm. Do you think so, Denise? Or no? Not that much more. I think that's. I think that's relatively accurate. Although I think the you know this one bump out is not really bump out but that's that's fine okay yeah, that's then then the other thing would be the town hall just has it the elevator on it and we would have we will be putting an addition if we're gonna actually renovate it yep. with elevator then we would do the addition and yeah, that would can, be yeah we'll a two, two story addition right yep. no yeah not one that's a, so yeah, lots of good food for thought there. We were taking notes. Um, we will continue to push this forward. Um, love, yeah. It's the police. Totally understand why the police. Why it's challenging to. You guys have a lot going on. Well, you, we would, you, I would love to move the police to. Yeah, to of course. Yeah, but no, I understood that you have so many projects. You can only do so many projects. So, and, and you'd, it, you'd hate to say, let's wait until we can move the police station. You, you need the units now mm -hmm. uh, or as close to now as, as you can get. So understood if it works, if it makes sense to you, we'll just take what we have for the option in which the police station goes away and maybe not spend much more time on it if we think it's not gonna be viable. Yeah. Or we can we can play around with the phasing concept a little bit, but. Um, it, it's helpful for us to know what we can't do so we can work within the right parameters. And, if somebody and give us eight to 10 million bucks, no problem. That'd but, be great. <laughs> yeah, maybe more. Say that we are focusing in on the, the first thing is the town hall. We, we're moving ahead on that, believe it or not. And, and yeah. it's very positive. So, um, I mean, we just heard from Ed Markey just recently. So, Oh, good. It's wonderful. So that's moving forward. And um, so ripping down the town hall and moving our town hall is probably going to happen after the Leary lot. And we, so having the senior housing where the current town hall is, does seem to be re good. But if the, if we don't move forward with the town hall, the town hall becomes our senior center or something like that. And we need to put the senior housing somewhere else on the campus. Um, yes, yep. I mean, because we're, we think we can do the financing for the town hall, but that's about it. And and the church, oh, then the, and the church, the 1821 building, the church that we own now 
is is going to go into i mean we're moving forward on that that hopefully by fall that will be um move in uh ready well we'll also know in october whether we get the million dollar pre-construction grant that we that we did too so so we'll there's a lot of stuff happening you know yeah. absolutely so what we can do is, Jenny, if you could send uh, the group the slides and take some screen grabs of the 3D model and send that to them, um, then guys, please take a look at, at the vision statement, the goals, the models, um, yep. and just you know take your time, mull it over. If you have thoughts, just please go ahead and send them to us. We wrote down everything that we talked about now. Any additional input we'll take into consideration. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep it moving. The, the Bloody okay. Brook um, project is 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 starting. Um, like I said, we have the money. The conservation district has the money. The problem is, it's going to be, you know, it's just a long haul project because you're working on their brook. So, um, you, when you talk about being Bloody Brook being a community asset, it's absolutely happening. It's just it happening in over the rest of this year. And into next year. I mean, it's really going to be a two-year project. Yeah. Okay. So, so Carolyn, does it make sense? Can you guys set up a, a, a group meeting with VHB, Senior Housing, and the Conscom, or something? You know, something of that sort, so we have a better understanding of what we can do probably, in that area. Probably um, before that meeting in September happens. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, we have to, we're doing the whole watershed wide plan right now with the FERCOG. And the problem is the FERCOG has the grant. We worked with them and have the grant, but they don't have the people power to actually do the planning at the moment. So we're kind of in line for that. And that's the key to get the movement of, you know, and working with um, the CONCOM because you got to have the watershed plan as the basis for your uh, application to the Con Conservation Commission. I mean, I, I can hope that it will be done by September, but. So, uh, okay, but, so so you say we have to wait for that. So the cons, they can't look at what we already have from Berkshire Design and determine what can happen? No, because all Berkshire Design did is do the wetlands delineation. So oh, gee, okay. On okay. the site. It was just basic information, so we knew, or you know, so Lou could see where, the, and um, uh, Jennifer could see where the actual delineations are, okay. and it eats up a lot of space. There's no question, right? Uh, okay, but because it's a degraded space, like where the St. James is, we have you know some wiggle room, um, mm -hmm. and if we're working on the on the brook what you're doing with stormwater, you can do trade-offs and stuff like that. And especially mm -hmm. if you're doing a friendly 40B, okay. you, can, you have a lot more okay. discussion, but you got the basis to this whole thing is the watershed plan. And that you, you got to start out, this is why it's a two-year project. You got to start out with the watershed plan okay. and you go into the actual work. Got it. And, and we're hiring field geology out of Maine so that we'll have um, hydrologic uh, geomorphic information on, on how to move the river. Okay, you know, so you're saying we won't know that until September, but hopefully prior to the, yeah, just be, okay. Because the reason why is that, you know, Luke and Jenny continue to working on these designs thinking that we may, you know, buy that, that plot of land I, we may not end up doing it if it doesn't make any sense. Right. Well, in the next six or eight weeks, we're supposed to get that appraisal. When the appraisal comes in right. and the woman's willing to work with us based mm -hmm. on the appraisal, um, certainly the wetlands delineations is going to be part of the other appraisal. Okay. Okay? okay. And then, so getting the wetlands delineation was really key. Um, okay. Getting the watershed plan for the Bloody Brook. And then, then you go and you're going to no, negotiate with the Conservation Commission. I mean, there's okay. just a lot of stuff involved. All right. 
Yeah. It's, you know, we'll be we'll be we'll be working for a couple of months. So and you know, th as conditions okay. change, just keep us abreast of of all of that, and okay. um, we can redirect our thinking. We won't front load our work because there's some moving pieces that yep. our Perfect. work will be more valuable to you once they're closer to resolution. So. Right. Um, so it's, you know, it, it, you guys can just keep us posted on, on all of that. Um, but yeah, Jenny, if you could send the, those images over, um, right. thank you guys so much for talking with us tonight. Um, and we can be in touch. Okay. Star, your dinner's cold, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ate it. No, when I shut off my camera, I was eating really quickly. <laughs> I kind of thought so. Well, thanks so much. And we're still on for September 14th. We've got that on the books. Yeah. So, okay. okay. Yes, I, absolutely. And closer to the date, let's re let's circle up on that one. Okay. Yeah, we should have an appraisal. I hope by the beginning of August, optimistic. That is optimistic. Okay. But that's if we have that, then we know yeah. if the woman is you know, okay. is going to work with us or not. All right. Excellent. Cool. Okay. So we're going to continue the meeting just for a little bit, but we will release Luke and Jenny. <laughs> from... <laughs> well, thank, thank you guys. You, so thank you, Thank you so much for that's all awesome input. We really appreciate it. It's yeah. helpful to us right. to know those realistic limitations. It just means we got to work in a smaller box, which uh, is, you know, that's that's the the nature of how of how it goes. But yeah. you know, certainly, we wouldn't want to leave you with with any scenarios that aren't doable. So um, appreciate the candid feedback and look forward sure to you're up for the challenge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. All right, looks like we're sort of dropping dropping like flies here. So I, there's really not a whole lot more left to the meeting here. Um, I don't know if there's anything that's critical to report. You know, Trevor had to leave. Okay, I'll just do a real quick. Um, we did send in for a T-Mobile grant. I don't know exactly when we're gonna hear about that, but that's another $50,000. I think it was a really strong grant that was for the um, 1821 building, okay? Um, I don't know. That's, you know, that's anything. I mean, everything else. Library building committee's coming along. Julie was on that, Tim was on that. Um, it's really great working with, um, with uh, Dan, although he wasn't there, his other person was there, and uh, the architect is really good. So that's a pretty solid, solid project. I think it's working well. The orientation of the building. I thought, you know, we were pretty clear we wanted solar panels on it. So it's a yeah, there will be. There will be. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So I, I, I think, I think it looks great. I don't know if Julie wants to chime in if she's still there, but. I think I it agree. works. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think really it's like really... it. it has lots of solar panels. Like the whole edition has all solar panels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That's the only thing I was concerned about. I just wanted to make sure we had those solar yeah. offset the yeah. operational costs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. No kidding. But yeah, I, th I think that's really, that's going, going on great. What else? Um, really looking forward to get the, uh, the planning and economic development person. I don't know what's happening with that, but you know, that's good. Uh, the parade was great. So much fun being on the float. <laughs> we missed you, Emily. <laughs> yep. Julie was there as a bystander cheering everyone on. I know. I saw Julie. Yeah. <laughs> so that was good. Um, and I mean, as far as planning board, we're still, we're working with Peggy Sloan from the FERCOG, who is wonderful. And we're working on the chapter 179, the planning board bylaws, which is great. And I think, Annalie, do you think, do you think we're gonna have them ready for the special town meeting or maybe in the spring? Yeah. More yeah. Realistically, yeah. We've been trying to think of um, having them for the October meeting, but I don't. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. I, I'd rather just take the time and do everything just right. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I have on my part. I know Andrea did. Let's see. She. I I'm still here. Oh, I, you can. Okay. I changed so, diapers. I fed yeah. bottles. Um, and yeah, okay. uh, and um, so the thing to know for the open space committee is that on May 29th, we met with 
um, a representative from Eagle Brook School about starting, you know, the whole process of having um, this uh, walking trail from Pine Nook all the way to River Road. And what mm. everyone is concerned about all the time is traffic and parking. And so we're, so we are talking with the folks at Eagle Brook and that's, you know, that's a plus. That's as far as we've got, I have to say. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, Julie, um, do you have anything to report? Not really. Critical? Okay. I have a, um, what did you hear from Ed Markey? Um, Ed Markey says it, it's uh, the 3 million bucks is included in the budget right now. In the federal budget, it's moving oh, wow. forward. Really? Yeah, he just he he just wanted to reassure us that it's still there. Oh, that's good news. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really Oof. good because you know that of course is got to be settled out by in the next couple months. Yeah, let's hope. We asked yeah. for four, right? Yeah, but I think we're only going to get three. That's okay. But I'll take three. The three. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah. I'm fine with that too. It's amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah, um, that is wonderful. Gosh. So uh, we just really need to get, um, we have the, uh, the conservation district, like I said, got the money this past week for our grant to do the Bloody Brook. And, and we had already gotten a grant to do the watershed plan. And, no. that's, and we're working with the FERCOG on that. It's just that they are limited in their people power. So yeah. we're we're in the queue. That is the primary key thing. Then we also are have a um, pollinator um, grant through the FERCOG. We're in in the communities. So it's it, we're the second uh, set of communities that are doing that, and that will help pay for some of the planting. And mm -hmm. then um, you know, so we'll have Owen Wormser. We'll have the ability to hire a field geology right. from Maine that does really all your flu. Fluvio geomorphic analysis of the brook, and that's you know that's like twenty thousand bucks. So I mean, by the end, this will be fifty thousand dollars invested in the just the you know getting the site ready and prepared and have this mm -hmm. pollinator buffer. So, Carolyn, so, all all of that is great. What about and I know we can't dredge the bloody, bloody brook, but can we take stuff out of it? Well, that's part of the why you hire field geology because okay. um, John Field is working, has worked with us. We did work on the Sawmill River. We did, you know, okay. half a million dollars of work there. We worked on the Upper Deer Field, and um, you know, there's we've been working with them for okay twelve years or so. So he's willing to work with us and give us a plan and that again mm -hmm. go to the conservation commission with you know somebody having a serious plan that's why i said ultimately all these grants together is an right. investment in preparing the site our municipal site and it's it's going to be about fifty thousand bucks by the time you get done cool. uh, just fixing up bloody brook from frontier down to conway street yeah but by the end it's going to be gorgeous and hopefully we'll have more usable land in our campus because of negotiations oh, with the Conservation Commission and we'll have a healthy bloody brook. And that's yeah. really key to resiliency in the future for us yeah. as a community. But we also are gonna have a better campus. You know, it's yeah. really beautiful. Okay. Maybe more park lights. All right. So I'm just looking at time. It's 8.15. We went like way over, but that was really good. Luke and Jenny are wonderful. They're really nice to work with. Um, so Annalie, do you have anything? Nope. No? I think sounds good. Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we will. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the others. I don't know. Uh, I think, well, Tim picked up his I know. today, but he was yeah, Tim, yeah. back. I thought they no, were that's back. fine. That's fine. I th Yeah. Anyway, okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, next meeting. Oh yeah, we should set a date for next. We should meeting. just set it up because if not, it's just we're really... the um, core group here. <laughs> yeah, Julie, can you yeah. look at Julie? Can you look at your uh, calendar? What would work for you in no, July? I'm on the road again. Oh, on the road again. Um, okay. Well, I'll 
I'm around all July. Thursdays are generally challenging because I'm on the road. But, um, What's an off Wednesday, Carolyn? An off Wednesday is um, the 5th and the 19th. We could do uh -huh. the 19th um, if, if we have more stuff, but I don't know if we, that might be too early. Uh, how about the 26th? No, that's a select board meeting night. How about August 2nd? Yep, we could do August 2nd. You know, how about, I'll put it out for August 2nd. You know, I mean, some people are going to be on vacation. There's not much we can do about that. Yeah. But, I'll be out of town that week and we'll not be able to join. Okay. Oh, well, you know, I mean, well, let's, let's skip then if we're going to do, I, I, I want Julie here. So how about, uh, how about the 16th? How about oh, going, the 16th? That's a month, yeah. Cause that's a month. Yeah. I have a, I have a conference the first through the fourth and then I have another conference the 16th through the 18th. Oh, All and right. the ninth is select board meeting. Gosh. Well, well, let's do the. I can do a Thursday. You can do a Thursday. Yeah, I can okay. do a Thursday. August third. No, not that week. I'm I'm gone. That oh, week. okay. How about August tenth? Um. Week. Yeah. Shoot, I'm supposed to be at a thing for United Way that night. August tenth. Yeah, I I'm, I can't do the tenth. Okay. I could do the eighth. <laughs> Jeez. That's a Tuesday. Yeah. Julie, can you do the eighth? As far as I know, I'm not looking at my calendar, but I think that's open. Okay, so let's do the eighth. Anna Lee, does that work for you? I don't know. Okay. Well, who's whoever it doesn't work for, they can send me their report and I'm happy to report, you know, I don't know. I don't know what yeah. else to say. Well, and you know, there there may not be quite as much activity because it's summertime. So how about I do August 8th, Tuesday, August 8th at 6 30. That's perfect because that, that gives us enough time we can try to hustle that appraisal. Yeah, I just okay. wanted enough time because that's kind of key whether yeah. um, how we go forward with the campus. Okay. Also, too, they yeah. really did ask that we review that vision and those goals, and um, you know that requires some good thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I and I want us to have give us enough time before the September fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I th but, but seriously, I think the vision and the goals. I think I think mostly they got really good feedback. Um, on Founders Day, and then you know we had that meeting with the Conscom, and so I, th I think you know what they said sort of mirrored what we already have, but really elaborated on it. So I think I think they're we're on a roll. So okay, on that note, um, do I hear a motion? Make that motion, Carolyn. <laughs> can we hear a second. Second, Emily. I'm also okay. adjourned. I'm going to adjourn the selectmen's meeting because Trevor just left. So it was, I don't even know when he left. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, so. he, he did in the chat group like half an hour ago. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank that. you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea.